Okay, so I've got the shot set up um, right now. Um, it's about 25 after 4 and sunset's about 4.31. Um, I'm getting a little worried that there isn't going to be um, any good color coming through. Um, there was a tiny little flash of pink that kind of came through the sky already. And I'm worried that that's all we're going to get. So I'm crossing my fingers that we're going to get a little more. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens in the next five or six minutes here. Um, the shot that I've got here, I've got the um, this big uh, fallen tree um, from the side of the river. Um, it's we're sh Right now I've got it set at a 20th of a second at ISO 100 and F8. Um, however, with the light going down, it'll probably stretch out probably closer to a second by the time we actually get a good shot. So um, we're still just going to wait. I'll give it another five or six minutes here. Hopefully today is not going to be another failure of a day. I'd really like to get something that I can go home with today because I've been freezing my ass off for the last week or so trying to get something useful and there just hasn't been anything that I've been able to to find. So. Um, we'll give it another six or seven minutes here and then we'll check in and see if there's anything we can take back to the studio or if this is just going to be a, another wasted day, <laughs> All right? Talk to you soon. Okay, so we're back here at the studio. I want to apologize for not coming back even though I promised I would. Um, I ended up trying to take a second picture after the first one that I worked on didn't quite turn out how I'd hoped. Uh, but the second one really didn't work. So I basically decided, you know what, we're going to go back to that original photo and see what we can pull from it. Um, it the, the goal is to basically take this photo that's on the screen right now and to take it to something resembling this. Um, if the computer would... There we go. Um, so it's got a little bit of work ahead of us, or there's a little bit of work ahead of us, but I think it's definitely within the realm of possibility that we can do this in under, you know, five or six minutes here. So we're gonna go back to this original shot and we're gonna start working. So um, right now it's obviously underexposed. Um, that was actually by design. Um, I was a little bit too cold to bring out my filters, so I did not use a proper graduated filter. So when you're shooting the sky in any kind of daylight situation, you basically want to underexpose the, the foreground because otherwise your, your sky is just going to end up blown out, which um, is fine. Um, if we hover over the, the icon or the triangle up here, you can see that the only places that are completely clipping are just tiny little bits of shadow, which is totally, um, totally okay. So um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start at the top here and work our way down um, the sliders. So the, the first thing I wanna do is I do wanna bring the exposure up about half a stop. Um, we got a ton of space in here where there's, we don't have to worry about clipping here, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I wasn't using the histogram when I was shooting, um, but I was just kind of eyeballing it. So I, like I said, I wanted to underexpose um, and give myself a little bit of headway in case we needed to bring stuff back up, which worked well in our favor here. Um, now, something I'm, I'm going to come back to in a few minutes is the contrast here. Um, you can't really tell any changes we're going to make with it um, right now. So we'll work on kind of balancing the colors and the, the lightness first, and then we can worry about the, um, the contrast and that kind of thing. So uh, first thing I want to do is I want to pull the highlights way, way down to probably around minus, you know, minus 65-ish kind of thing. Um, and we'll we'll leave the uh, the shadows and the the whites and the blacks for a minute. Um, one thing I do want to do is I want to do some gradient filters, um, so that way we can kind of get an idea of what the rest of the image is going to look like before we start messing with the colors and stuff. So uh, we'll do the top one first here. Um, so we're gonna bring that down and splay it out, feather it like that. And so one thing I I was kind of hoping uh, when I was on location that didn't happen was that there was gonna be more color in the sky, but we can kind of fake it um, by adding some purple or pink um, to the by tint. So we'll, we'll bring the tint up maybe around 45 or so, which gives it um, the, kind of changes the orange to more pinky and the, the, the blue to a more purpley color, which I think is still very uh, believable. Um, I don't know if you, if, if any of you have been to Calgary, but this guy, there are the sunlights, there are sunsets that we get on any kind of regular basis are 
uh, very or much more purple than than this. So uh, this is definitely not out of the realm of possibility. And then we'll do another graduated filter um, and we will reset those settings. Um, this time we're going to go um, exposure. We're gonna bump that up quite a bit to maybe 1.4 or so. Um, we're gonna go contrast, we'll add quite a bit of contrast to about 67, that looks okay. Um, we'll leave the saturation there for a sec. Uh, clarity, we'll do quite a bit um, because all, all it's gonna do is bring out the detail in the in the bark and on the, on the ground here. And then uh, we're gonna turn off the saturation, but we're going to add some dehaze uh, around the, you know, 12. You know what? I actually kind of like it. Whoa, whoa. I'll do it around there. Let's go like minus eight. All right. And then we'll go back to the top gradient filter here for a second. Um, I actually want to increase the saturation even just a little bit more and the exposure. Uh, I'm going to put that maybe around 0.5. Yeah, that's, that looks good. Okay. So now that we've got some, you can actually see what's going on down in this section in the kind of main foreground area here. Um, now we can start messing with the contrast. So the contrast that I want to do, I actually want to bring down the contrast a little bit. Um, the reason for that is the hopefully to counteract the, the clarity that we added in the main um, or sorry, in the graduated filter, but then we're going to bring up the clarity, the the image wide clarity to you know around. Uh, I'm going to say 40 or so. We can try, um, although it's getting a little bit mushy around the edges here. So uh, we'll just leave that at let's say 30. And then uh, the vibrance. I really like the colors throughout this whole image. So we're going to go quite a bit uh, high around 40 or so and maybe maybe even a little bit more yeah right right about there okay so that's most of the adjustments we're the global adjustments anyways that we're going to make um, the next thing we want to work on is the 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 detail so what i would do uh, as you guys know um, so we hold the alt or option key um, when we're uh, we're doing the masking, so it'll go change that to say reset sharpening, and we're gonna drag this uh, mask all the way over, almost all the way to the right, because um, all we want to sharpen is just the very fine edges of the trees. Um, we don't need to sharpen the the snow or anything on the the creek bed, and then we'll bring the sharpening up to about let's say 75. And then the other thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to bring in a little bit of noise reduction, um, not a whole lot, just, I don't want to look, make it look too smooth. Um, even 11 is probably a little too much, um, but just to kind of get rid of a little bit of the blockiness, but yeah, that looks perfect. Okay. And so we can close the detail tab. Um, we don't need to do any lens corrections because this was shot on the um, Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II, which has the built-in lens corrections. Um, so if we change the loop info to show, um, you'll be, oh, got the wrong one on there, uh, info two. So you can see it was shot at 12 millimeter. Um, we ended up, I ended up leaving it at the 120th of a second. Um, any longer and it would have been uh, too overblown, but that's okay. Um, so we don't need to worry about any chromatic aberration because there wasn't any light coming through these trees that you can see, um, or nothing that the um, that the chromatic aberration tool is going to fix um, for this image. And if we turn it on, there's literally no no change. So we just leave that off. And then finally, we are going to go down to the effects tab and basically just going to go to a post crop vignette of about let's say 18 maybe yeah yeah that looks good okay so the only thing left to do now is um i wanted to 
make the the snow a little bit more interesting looking. So what I did in the the test um, edit that I did was basically make a large uh, radio fi radial filter, and we're gonna uh, turn down the saturation. We're gonna reduce the exposure by let's say 0.5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add another one, even smaller than that first one. And we're going to overlay them. Let me stretch it out just a little bit more. Change the desaturation. And this time we're going to increase the exposure um, to, let's say, 67. No, that's a little too much. Let's try 50. So what, what we've done is basically given the, the photo a little more depth uh, because you can kind of see the transition from the light to the dark to the light again. Um, it just gives it a little more interest, I find, um, and, and a little more uh, three-dimensionality to it. So the only thing that I can kind of see that I might want to do a little bit more of is the the trees on the, on the left here, this kind of a forested area. I want to uh, make those a little brighter and see if we can bring the greens out in the trees more. Um, and kind of swing this around and we will let's reset the saturation. We're going to increase the exposure just a little bit. Maybe bring the point, the center point, over a little bit. <clears throat> And then we'll increase the saturation over here. We don't want to make it look too obvious. If we go like that. Let's try and add one more radial filter to see if we can lighten this tree just a little bit. It probably won't do what we want, but the great thing about being not a great photographer is that we get to play around. So. I would increase this, the uh, the exposure here as well, um, but that's not really doing it. So you know what, let's just delete that altogether. Um, the one final thing that I will do, and I need to turn my tablet on for this. And yeah, that's doesn't want to turn on. That's okay. Or is it going to turn on? No, it is not going to turn on. Okay, so we'll just use the the mouse for this one. So the other thing I want to do is once again I want the I want the exposure high and and I want the saturation high as well. And I want to see if we can bring just a little more into these sections here. Um, I just find that they're a little too dark and a little lacking. They're just kind of light holes. And see if we can bring them back any got the, the flow set pretty low at about a, a 37. Um, I find that's good for small adjustments like this where we're not trying to make things super obvious, just trying to bring things back just a little bit. And we can bring the shadows up on those. And maybe we can bring a little color in. There we go. All right. So, I mean, we've got that done pretty much exactly how I like it. It's got some depth. Um, the tree as the foreground is a really interesting um, visual. And the, the color in the sky is exactly how I'd want it. So, I mean, that pretty much sums it up here. Um, we can go the before and after and you can see the difference. So what would you, what would you do differently? Would you make any changes? Would you have done things completely differently? Would you have done it exactly the same? I, I'd love to know what, you, what your thoughts are on it. Um, you know, if you, like the photo, give it a thumbs up. If you hate the photo, give it a thumbs down. Um, if you haven't already, uh, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. Um, we put out videos every other week. Um, and yeah, if you have any comments, I'd love to, to know what you think. Um, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time on another episode of I Am Not A Good Photographer.